everybody. So for today we're going to be talking about the distance formula or finding the distance between two points. In order to do that I just want to recall uh, the quadratic formula. So that's when you have a, I'm sorry, not the quadratic formula, excuse me, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is used when you have a right triangle. So notice here we have a right triangle because we have a right angle and remember this is the hypotenuse this is a leg and this is a leg. So if I were to do the Pythagorean theorem, which some of you know as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, others might know it as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, you should be able to substitute the values and solve for x here. So if I substitute 12 squared plus 16 squared equals x squared, then you should be able to solve for x. So now 12 squared is 144, and 16 squared is 256, and then when you add them together you get 400, and then to solve for x I need to square root. Square root gets rid of the squared, so x equals 20. So the square root of 400 is 20. So that's really the Pythagorean theorem. Most of you are familiar with that. I could do it again here. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. So when I do 15 squared, I'm sorry, when I do 225 plus 64, I get 289. And then the square root of 289 is 70, I'm sorry, 17. Wow, I'm really tripping over my own words today. So here we get x equals 17. So the Pythagorean theorem is going to help us here with the distance between two points. So keep that on the back burner for a quick second while we start looking here. So can we find the distance between these two points, starting with this example right here? That should be simple. We can count here. One, two, three, four, five spaces. So the distance here is five. Same thing with this, something like this. I can count. One, two, three. The distance here is three. Same thing with the next two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the distance is seven. Then over here, one, two, three, four, five. So the distance here is five. So as you could see, if I have a horizontal or a vertical line, finding the distance is simple. I could just count the spaces. I count how many spaces between the two points, and that is my distance. Notice I use the lowercase letter d. But what happens when I have two points like this? So if you notice, it's a diagonal line. I can't easily just count the spaces, because look, these are not really fair you know, they're not all correct lengths of spaces. So really, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a right triangle using these two points. So if I create a right triangle by making a horizontal line and a vertical line, so here's my right angle, and then I could easily say, hey, well, oops, this distance right here is three spaces. And then the bottom distance right here, one, two, three, four, five spaces, can I now easily find the distance here? Absolutely. I could do the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. 9 plus 25 equals x squared. So 9 plus 25 is 34. So then I square root. So x equals, well, there is no square root of 34, so I'm just going to leave it the square root of 34. So instead of x, though, actually, I'm going to say, okay, the distance is the square root of 34. Notice how I can easily do the Pythagorean theorem. So really, the distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if I want to focus on this distance right here, that's the difference from one x value to another x value. So here, let me change colors here so that we could see. So I'm talking about the distance from this x value, where x is 1, to this x value, where x is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So that's the difference in the x values. So really, watch this. This is x minus x squared. I'm going to keep going now. I'm going to change my color to blue. This distance is actually the difference between the y values from here to here. So I went from 2 to a 5. So if I subtract those, y value minus y value, that's what I get the distance equal to. So if I were to really write it a little bit nicer, I'm going to switch it up. It looks something like this. So now to solve for the distance in the end, I would have to square root. So some of you have this formula memorized, which is great. Others not so much, which is not so great because they don't give it to you on a formula sheet. So really, you kind of have to use the idea that it's Pythagorean theorem. The difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y's squared equals the distance squared. If you'd prefer, if you'd prefer to write this formula here instead of this one, as long as you remember to square root, that's totally fine. This is, again, it's the Pythagorean theorem. That's where the distance formula comes from. So I have a few examples here for you. So if I give you the graph, you can easily do, you know, Pythagorean theorem. But if I give you two points just like that and ask you to do the distance, you may want to resort to using the formula. So how about you pause the video here, give a try on some of these problems, and then come back and see what the answers are. Good luck. For those of you who are still watching, I just did the first example of two different ways that you could solve it. Okay. So option one is create a right triangle and do the Pythagorean theorem. That's if I give you the graph, it's easy. Your option two is you could still use the distance formula. So make sure you really know what the two coordinates are because you, before you use the distance formula. So I'll keep this up while you guys complete the rest of the page. Okay, so maybe at this point you finish a page. I'm going to zoom in and show you that there are different ways that you can answer this question. Notice that this is... Uh, you know, the answer is the square root of 68. I use this. This is actually something I physically, these are answers I got when I did in class. So some of the answers you'll see are from actual students that I um, had complete this page. So to the nearest tenth, if you need, if you were asked, simplified, simplest radical form, if you remember how to simplify. But really, if you got to the square root of 68, great. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, same thing with the third one, the square root of 145. Give yourself a tap on the back if you got that. Square root of 113. And then in this section, you'll start seeing some of these answers. The first answer was 10, 5, 5, 5, 10, 13. Notice here, the student had an error. They used the plus sign instead of the minus sign. They didn't have the square, so it's very easy to miss, you know, get the formula incorrect. That's why some people actually kept writing the formula over and over and over. The more you write it, the better you'll get at it. This person forgot to do the whole square root with a plus. You do have to show that step. 13, 5, and 5. So those were the answers there. And if you got to the take it a step further question, it says to show that it's an isosceles triangle. To show it's isosceles, I needed two sides congruent. So I only had the three points. So what I did here is I sketched a triangle. I labeled each point a different number based on what they gave us. And then for each side, I had to use those two points for the orange. I had to use these two points for the red. And then this side, I had to use these two points for the green. And then I noticed, hey, take a look here. Two of the sides were the same distance. Therefore, it's isosceles. So we'll be getting to this uh, in a couple of days, but I just wanted to show you how to find distance. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.